Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today has the <laughs> temporary title of Ocean Beach, which is a beach uh, not that far from where I live. What I mean, it's like a 40 minute drive, but a really big, beautiful beach. And um, the uh, the painting is of these uh, feature we out here we call the heads or headlands I guess, um, but it's just called the the, the Fongaree heads. And um, I've made a painting from this uh, scene before, and maybe that's what we'll talk about today. Because you know, I imagine you're a painter and you're anxious to uh, have some tips and stuff. Well, here's a tip for you: um, you should be taking your own photographic reference. Uh, you can. You know, you can make a painting out of all sorts of things. Um, always keep in mind, though, that uh, you don't want to just try and copy that photograph. That is a big mistake, and you don't want to do it. What you want to do is use the photograph as inspiration to create a painting. And because you're doing that, um, that means it's not a problem to use the same reference photograph to make different paintings so I did a painting uh, based on this very same photograph um, I think that back in 2018 or so and that was really red and orange and um, dark you know this one's got a bit of darkness to it but I sort of endeavored to bring in a bit more light and you can see there's a lot of room for a big sky and so pretty important to have an interesting and beautiful sky there and um, I'll tell you where I got the sky actually at one point uh, I can't remember this photographer's name but he had a whole course I play around with photography he had a whole course on doing portraits which is something I never do but I was very interested in his process and one of the things he would do is he would use these um, sort of out of focus um, skies behind his portraits and he had a pack of those included with his, his little tutorials and I've hung on to that and that's one of the skies that I used uh, as reference for this painting and I have used that same sky as reference for paintings before too so because you're not cleaving exactly to your reference it's just inspiration you know that's that's the mindset you want to have Oh, by the way, we're going to be missing a little chunk of the painting here. Uh, it's coming up at some point. And, um, sorry about that. You know, I, I thought I was recording, but I'm not. And, um, uh, why am I holding up those brushes, you might wonder. Well, uh, yeah, because, uh, we're looking at all sorts of, um, I think potential supply chain problems in the modern world. Uh, my recommendation to you as a painter is if you um, you want to keep painting you should stock up on things because uh, uh, it's it, I can see the writing on the wall personally and um, so these blue brushes I'm using are actually really very cheap brushes but quite good they're by DOS um, they're DOS bristle filberts and um, out here in New Zealand they're like two and three dollars and so I did this whole painting with these um, relatively cheap brushes and I got a good result so uh, if you know what you're doing now they the, what is what is the difference well they will drop hairs and um, but if you clean your brushes properly um, after a while they start conforming to how you work so you after you break them in I have some some brushes now I do believe these uh, these DOS brushes are wear a bit quicker than my favorites which are the uh, Robert Simmons signet series brushes uh, which uh, I do have a, a, a pretty good inventory of but um, like I say I just feel like um, especially heck I live out here in an island so almost everything here comes from someplace else I'm well stocked on brushes and paints and uh, regardless of um, where things head I should be able to paint if I like to and um, that's why I invested in a, a Quite a few of these cheaper brushes as well and was finding oh they're making nice paintings they got snap that's the thing too with a brush you want you want snap and so I use hogs hair uh, which is you know a bristle uh, type brush um, in my experience there are some th synthetic brushes that claim to give you a bristle type experience in my experience you can do things with them but they not the same as actual hogs hair uh, for 
getting the type of effects that I get here uh, would be nearly impossible with um, uh, like either a soft hair type brush or even a synthetic brush it's just not going to have the right feeling so you're better off with the old uh, the old pig's hair brush and um, there's that but getting back to reference so um, you know I'm a different person than I was in 2018 and so when I came across this reference I started thinking oh I could like well, last time I painted it I did it I think it's an 8 by 12 which is the golden mean proportion but this is the uh, my favorite panoramic proportion which is basically two squares side by side so it's twice as wide as it is high and I mean you can get more panoramic than that but that's a basic a good strong panoramic proportion and one of my favorites you've seen a lot of that proportion on this channel and um it's not a stock size or anything. Uh, by the way, the, the size of this painting is 7 by 14. But um, I was think, thinking of other things I could lay on you to help you out with your journey. So, yeah, I have I have created a composite photo that, you know, it looks a little, you know, actually it looks really good, to be honest. But a lot of times with my composite photos that I do in Photoshop, um, you know, I don't worry about them looking super awesome as a photo. I worry about, uh, well, I don't worry at all, but I try to get them to be something that's inspiring. So I try to get inspiring uh, a color range in there if I can, even if it's a little gaudy sometimes, because um, you'll adjust as you're painting. And, you know, trying to paint like a, a photo that's got a blown out white sky and everything's just green and gray <laughs> you know like so many of the photos I take out here in New Zealand are like that um, I will th I will throw it into a color cast a lot of times how I determine that the color cast will be determined by the sky so in this original reference photo the sky was mostly blown out it was like a kind of overcast day and um, which the good thing about that is you didn't have a real strong light source on the landscape so um, in this case I brought in a, a sunset and um, actually the Sun is like right smack dab in the middle but and in that reference sky picture it actually had a little ball which I got rid of so you can have big bright spots in the sky that aren't exactly don't have to you know I don't recommend ever painting a ball for the Sun I just don't there might be the exception of that might be if it was a foggy day you know how we get that effect you know but otherwise I would just make it the brightest spot in the sky um, but I was able to do that because there was no distinct light source on the land but even there and here's another tip for you for you you wonderful people that have made it in this far um, you still want to pick a direction though on your lighting so you'll notice that on the landscape forms that I have a sort of a light source kind of ended can indicated as coming from our left and but it's it's not overwhelmingly strong but you definitely it, it's just if you paint all your forms completely flat um, that's not going to look good so I don't stress it but you'll see uh, actually you can already see where I did my underpainting where I kind of made things a little darker on the right side or right um, and lighter on the other side and it's just gives you a little something to hold on to because if you if you don't do that and you stick with everything indistinct you're kind of going to be floating around a bit and if you're floating around the viewer of your painting is also going to be floating around and you don't want that you want people to feel uh, well hey we're doing pretty good on today's video um, it's another thing we can kind of talk about so my paintings don't take a huge long time I do a good amount of preparation I have my board prep I do my drawing uh, I have some nice interesting reference set up um, and, and, but when I do the painting itself I like to move through things quite uh, uh, not rapidly but in an expedient manner so everything's fresh you want to have freshness in your painting because if you start overworking things especially like something like I'm trying I, you see me painting right now which is you know a beautiful sunset you want to have just expressive brushwork that's doing the job 
and, and, and then you want to move on. If you keep overworking things, what happens is your painting gets really tight. It looks even it looks really amateurish. You can actually fool people quite a lot if you're a painter starting out. Just don't overwork things and your paintings right from there will look less amateurish, I guarantee you. So if you made it this far in the video, write that down. The, the, you, this painting, um, the actual uh, actually, I will say in the live video, there's um, the color mixing session at the beginning and some other things like that, um, which aren't uh, a part of this 15 minute video, which has been sped up by about seven or eight times. Um, but the total length of the painting session of this painting was right around two hours or so. Um, which for me is, you know, about average, you know, I, I could, if I have a much more complex scene, it might take me, um, more time, or if it's much bigger, it might take me more time, uh, as I've got to adjust for those sorts of things. But in fact, I have some paintings that, you know, take me seven or eight hours to do in total. And some people might go, well, well geez, Mike, you know, you want, you know, four or 500 for this. Yeah, but how many paintings can I do a year that are good? <laughs> They're saleable. You know, you have to think of it that way. So, um, and it's not like uh, I could do two or three or four paintings like this in a day. I can't. I basically uh, get myself, uh, it's almost like, think of it like you would a concert, you know. You got the roadies, they're bringing in all the gear. Um, you know, you're uh, doing your scales before uh, you, you're, if you're the singer, you know, before your performance. Um, you have to get properly prepared and then everyone shows up and you have a concert and it's a great experience that lasts, you know, a relatively short amount of time. Um, you get a t-shirt, <laughs> uh, but the experience stays with you for a lifetime, you know, it's a distinct experience. You could go, well, geez, you paid $400 for two for two hours to, to to listen to some guy sing it well no I paid for the experience and that's um, just something I want to pass on to you you can't really apply so we're getting into pricing a little bit but not that I'm a specialist on pricing you know I'm happy especially with the uh, the state of the world now it's like I'm not selling a lot of paintings uh, most of my work was sold to tourists and they're just not around um, so which is, you know, a bit sad, but whatever. I'm happy to be able to paint, and I'm extra happy to be able to share what I do with you. And uh, um, like I said, you can check out this painting in the members area. Uh, I have been really endeavoring, if you have been a member in the past but failed, I've been endeavoring to get a little more, uh, that's not a real word, but I call it teachy, you know, try and pass on um, some more good information as I'm painting but in some cases the members area might just have a real-time video of me painting and um, uh, but I have recently started including the actual reference image at the beginning and uh, and my whole color mixing approach before uh, jumping into the actual painting session so uh, we got just a minute left here one thing I did on this painting that was maybe a little different is like um, you see I've established a palette of grays Oh, by the way, the thing you missed was me painting that whole neutral area on the bottom. And that was actually full of a bunch of tiny r rocks, uh, which aren't going to make a good painting. You don't want to paint a bunch of tiny rocks. So what I did was just simplify. And it was all very flat, too. So I created a few planes and made it somewhat interesting. Um, and it's a, basically a negative space in the painting. So it's got a little complexity to it, but it's all just implied. Um, and creative all the shapes and forms there are basically out of my imagination there wasn't that much in the reference um, and the other thing I wanted to say so one thing I'm doing is a little different is this areas that I've been painting in the middle ground that's actually green but it's a green that goes with the other colors so I could have chose to paint that as a gray or purple or something like that and that might have been um, a good way to go but I'm very happy with the result that I got here Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you got something out of watching me do this this painting. I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it's really uh, come out nice and um, I'm happy to show it to you. And if you have any questions, you can always ask them down in the uh, the comments section. I'm happy to help or send me an email at landscapepainter.co.nz and uh, 
yeah I'll try and help you out the best I can anyway have a good day I'll be until I come back with another video I want you to do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself um, your family your loved ones try your best to, to, to love your enemies because it really will help your mind not to have um, any anger or hostility there and um, God bless you take good care stay out of trouble